great shepherd and the good shepherd, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I made my decision. I made my choice. I'm going all the way with the Lord. Did say my best friend? No, no. I'm going. He's worthy. He's worthy. God is worthy. The one that woke you up this morning, started you on your way. He's worthy. He's worthy. God, you're worthy. We honor you. We honor you. Yeah. Yeah, Jesus. Hallelujah. As we bow in his presence. Yeah, God, my, my Savior. Holy one. Yeah, my, my, my. I'll save you. Our King and our Lord, hallelujah, majestic God, hallelujah, King of kings and he's Lord of lords, he come on, I say, he's our shepherd, not only that, he's our great shepherd, he's our good shepherd, we honor you God, we come in your presence and we bow our heads this morning, forgive us Lord, hallelujah, seek to thoughts, ways and action and deeds that was not pleasing in your sight, God we come to praise you, we come to honor you, we come to glorify your wonderful name, yeah, the good shepherd this morning, we honor him, hallelujah, on this women's day, Jesus, hallelujah, we applaud you this morning, God, for being so good. We applaud you this morning for being so kind. We applaud you for being Lord. Hallelujah. Savior, our Redeemer this morning, God. If there anyone standing in need of anything on this morning, hallelujah, it's their time. Hallelujah. They can raise their hand and say, pick me up today, Lord. Pick me up, Lord. Hallelujah. We honor you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Our way maker today, our company keeper, our God. Hallelujah. Our paraclete. Hallelujah. That's alongside of us this morning all the way lord hallelujah we made a decoration today hallelujah all the way lord hallelujah we thank you for our under shepherd today bishop robertson lord allow him to have another birthday lord if there been anyone else in the house today we say happy birthday to them too god we are grateful for him hallelujah continue giving wisdom and knowledge hallelujah for the sheep today in the land lord in the name of jesus continue to bless his family lord pastor boone and her family god all the ministerial staff god the musician today bless them going in bless their coming out hallelujah Minister Brian and his family in a special manner on today, God. Hallelujah. Do it for your glory. Do it for your honor, for your praise. Hallelujah. Oh, walk up and down every aisle today. Holy Ghost, show out. Holy Ghost, hallelujah. Show out today. Supply the needs according to the riches and glory. Hallelujah. Have your way. The preacher of the hour, bless her. Bless her, Jesus. Hallelujah. Have your way. Abide in the temple. Bless as never before. We ask in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Put those happy hands together and bless him. Put those happy hands together and bless him. Put those happy hands together and bless the King of kings and Lord of lords. And remember throughout today, we're going all the way with the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we keep clapping our hands? Can we keep lifting up the mighty name of Jesus? Because our God is worthy to be praised. The psalmist says, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. If you're here to bless the Lord, clap your hands, put your hands together and give God a mighty praise. The song says, I will bless thee, O Lord.
You stand to your feet, hallelujah. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I will bless the Lord. My, my, my. Tell somebody else at all times. Bless him, hallelujah. Somebody just shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let us turn to Psalm 25. Responsibly, if you have it, say amen. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. Lead me in thy truth. And teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for the goodness sake, O Lord. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. Number 10 all together. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimony. The word of the Lord is blessed.
place to sleep. Hallelujah. I may not have a lot of money, Hallelujah. but thank God I have food to eat. Hallelujah. I want to thank you for how he kept me. Hallelujah. Thank him, he never left me. I can tell the world, tell the world I am blessed. I am blessed. Oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. Oh, Lord.
Money in the pot. Put shoes on the feet. Because God is in the doubt in the stick. He's a lawyer in the court. Because God is. Because God is. Now I can't get a witness. Now I can't get a witness. Who God is. Yeah. Uh-huh.
information, amen, that God is my everything, then that allows you, it allows me, it allows us to understand he is indeed a very present help in the time of trouble, amen, he's that shield, he's our buckler, he's our strong tower, amen, he is the author and the finisher of our faith, amen, he keeps me, he's all over me, and he keeps me alive. Amen. He's moving inside of me. Somebody say right now. Right now. We're not, we're not wishy-washy uh, saints. We're not wishy-washy believers. We know where our hope is and where our help comes from. Our help comes from the Lord. My help is in the name of the Lord. Come on, somebody. Amen. So I'm not a wishy-washy believer. I know that I know that I know that I know. Amen. Those things may happen in any of our lives. I'm confident. I'm convinced and I'm convicted that he's able to keep me. He's able to sustain me. I'm convinced of that. I'm convinced of that. I'm convinced of that. I'm convinced of it. He's able to keep me and sustain me and to fortify me amen and though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i won't fear evil because because he's he's what he's with me he's with me he's with me and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me <laughs> amen hallelujah tells me I am his own. I am his own. I am his own. I, I belong to him. I belong. You do. You do know who you are. You do know who you are. So many things in life would try to mess with our, with our emotions and with our, you know, our temperaments and stuff like that. And whether it be a rain or whether it be too cold or too hot or, and the list goes on all those things try to mess with us try to affect us in some capacity hallelujah Jesus but when I really sit down and put it all together and put it all together I realize God is my every everything I realize that. Amen. I, 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 <laughs> amen. I, I can't think of anybody else as much as I love and, and adore my lovely, awesome wife. Amen. She's all that in the back of chips. Amen. But there, nobody can do us like Jesus. Amen. No, no one, no one, no one can do us like Jesus. I heard uh, someone say well, on one of the programs on the radio uh, months ago, they, uh, yeah, they were telling uh, one of the preachers, it says, hold on to things loosely. Don't hold on so tight. And he went on to say that this woman who was an author said that 
and she was talking to Charles Kendellis Michael. She said, when you hold on loosely, it allows God to come in at any time to take that which is his. When you hold on real tight, you think it's yours. But if you hold on loosely, when the good master comes back, then he can take it from you because it was never yours in the first place. It was his. That says that God is my every, everything. Thank you, choir. Y'all blessed us this morning. Say amen. Thank you, choir. Thank you. Thank God for what God is doing in our midst and what he's doing right now. I'm so glad to see Sister Connor. Um, God bless you, Missionary Connor. Good to see you. Amen. God is strengthening and in fortifying, praying for the bereaved family, the sick family. Every man, uh, Minister John, of course, Minister uh, Boston is now home from the hospital, so keep her in your prayers as well. Amen. Amen. Women's Day 2014. <laughs> bless the Lord Jesus. God bless you. Thank God for our women. Can we say amen for our women? Brothers, can we say amen for our sisters? Oh, come on. Well, that's good. That's good. Amen. We appreciate what God is doing. Amen. Here, amen, at Christ's gospel. And certainly to be a part of this service, amen, is a blessing, amen, unto us. I'm expecting, we're expecting God to move all day long, amen, all day long in the service, in the sanctuary. God bless you, amen, for what God is doing. Amen. And we'll share some other things a little tad later on. But we're blessed this morning to have with us, amen, uh, no stranger to Christ's gospel. Amen. <laughs> amen. Evangelist uh, Florine Downing. Amen. A part of our ministerial staff. Amen. Hallelujah. Has been given the assignment to bring unto us the word of God. Amen. There's only one flooring down. Would you agree with that? Often imitated. <laughs> but there's only one original. Amen. Uh, what's the lady? Anita, Anita Wilson? That's her name. She says, I, I, I'm happy about being me. Amen. I, I think it's important to be. She's happy about being her. Uh, yeah, and Florine can be very dramatic. But, but that's her. Come on, somebody. You can be very stoic, and that's you. But God has placed us in the body as it has pleased him. Amen. Sisters and brothers, I'm convinced this morning that we're going to hear a rainbow word from the Lord through her. And we ask that you pray for her. She doesn't have the white and red on, but that's okay. We don't need white and red to preach. Come on, say amen, somebody. But we need to hear a word from the Lord. Can I get a witness? Will you rise to your feet this time, period? Amen. As the woman of God comes to bring forth the word of God, let's agree to be back to this downing for hearty. Praise the Lord. Everybody. Hallelujah. Come on, remain on your feet. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is so worthy for this celebration of Women's Day. God is worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you glory. Hallelujah. Father, we bless your name. Father, we honor you. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, God, for your goodness and for your mercy. God, you be heard this morning in your word, God. Go in and out the pews. God, let the word of God be delivered, God, according to what you have ordained for this day. God, bless every woman, every man, every child that's blessed standing here today. In the name of Jesus, God, that you'll be glorified in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Bless the Lord. I bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God for an awesome pastor. <laughs> 
Ah, oh, the diocesan of the state of New Jersey. Hallelujah. Wow. What an introduction. I, my pastor knows me well. <laughs> but I bless the Lord for this opportunity to be before you, and I give honor to him as the head of the household. I give honor to him as my shepherd and my leader, and to First Lady Robinson. Amen. To our pastor, Hannah Boone, which is our assistant pastor. Can you say amen? Who's my mentor? Who well, I've just sold myself to her hip, regardless of whether she wanted to or not. I still sold myself to her hip, and I thank God for her. I thank God for you men and women of God that are gathered here this morning. I also want to thank God um, for my family being here. I thank God for my older sister being here, Avis, and her oldest daughter, Audrey, or her next to the baby, Audrey. Amen. She's a very busy woman, and I thank God that she um, is here this morning. She's a... She owns her own business, and this is her third one. I think she's going to keep this one. She, but God has blessed her. She is, um, she's an author, and she's a published author. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand for the body of Christ. We need to recognize and celebrate our own. Often she, I'll wake up in the morning because she's published in um, the daily readings. Some of you will read daily readings, and she's published in the daily readings, and um, she has a couple of stories in there. Um, if you want to know what happened in our family, get the book. She often makes fun of us in her books. But I thank God for her. I thank God. Um, also, can't help but give God honor for, for my husband. Amen. Minister Arnold Downing. Hallelujah. I thank God for him. I thank God for the man that he is in my life. And I thank God for giving him to me. Everybody, you know, you need to wait on God because God knows exactly what you need. Arnold Downing has brought a balance to me. I've... I told you that story before, learned how to cook on a regular basis now and doing some things, so <laughs> he balances me. But I thank God for that, and I'm, I'm just honored to be here this morning. I thank God for the opportunity to share into the lives of both men and women into our youth, and who's gathered here today a word that the Lord has shared this morning. So if you'll find me in the book of Esther, I, I'm not texting, I am um, actually forgot my glasses, so I have to, had to blow it up on my phone. So you'll find me in the four, uh, fourth chapter of the book of Esther, amen. And the theme for this Women's Weekend or this Women's Day is for such a time as this. Amen, amen. And um, I'm going to read and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blame my sister ahead of time. She's I'm writing a book about the life of the role of men and women and how they play in each other's life. And... Um, so when you hear some of the statements I'm going to make, it's, it's excerpts from her book. <laughs> but the Lord has allowed me, since I, um, I'm helping her with it, hopefully it will be out soon. But um, y'all pray for us and as we go into the word of God. Esther, the fourth chapter, and it reads as thus. When Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud and a bitter cry and came even before the king's gate for none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth in every province whithsoever the king's commandment in his decree came. There were great mourning among the Jews and fasting and weeping and wailing and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. So Esther's maids and her chamberlains came and told it to her. Then was the king exceedingly grieved, and she, the queen, exceedingly grieved, and she went, sent remnant to clothe Mordecai and to take away his sackcloth from him, but he received it not. Then called Esther for Hatash, one of the king's chamberlains, whom he had appointed to attend unto her, upon her, and gave him a commandment to Mordecai to know what it was and why it was. So Hatash went before, forth to Mordecai unto the street of the city which was before the king's gate. And Mordecai told him of all that had happened unto him and of the sum of the money that Haman would, had promised to pay for the king's treasures for the Jews to destroy them. Also he gave them a copy of the writing of the decree that was given to Shushan to destroy them, to show it unto Esther and to declare it unto and to charge her. And she could go into the king to make supplication unto him and to make requests before him and for her people. And Hatash came and told Esther the words of Mordecai. Again, Esther spake unto Hatash and gave him commandment unto Mordecai. 
all the king's servants and the people of the king's province do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come into the king into the inner courts who is not called, there is one law of his to put him to death, except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter, that he may live. But I have not been called to come into the king these 30 days. And they told to Mordecai Esther's words. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knows whether thou art called to the kingdom for such a time as, it, as this. Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast ye for them, and neither eat nor drink three days, neither night nor day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so shall I go unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. Thank and praise God for the word, reading of the word. Also, I just want to um, thank God for Sister Tony, who's in our midst today. She buried her father on Friday, but she still thought it not robbery to come out this morning. We're still praying for you. Amen. And good to see you, Brother Byron. One of the things as I was preparing to prepare this message, I, I just want to set the tone and just share a few minutes with you what the whole story of Esther was about in brief. One of the things that happens when we read the book of Esther, we always get to the fourth chapter and, and we stop at the, um, around the ninth verse or the 18th verse and, and then we think that that's the end of the book of Esther. But there are really, it goes up to nine and ten chapters right after and that's what we're going to deal with. But I just want to take a few minutes with you to set the tone of what happened and how Esther came to her place. And some of you might not remember the story, but just give me a few minutes to share it. Esther's, before Esther, there was a queen that sat on the throne, and her name was Vestai. And Vestai was in her house because her husband, whose name was Asher Harris, he was in his throne, and he was celebrating for 180 days. He was partying for 180 days. And it was somewhere in the midst of those 180 days, the Bible goes on to tell us that he called for his wife, Vesta. And he said, listen, come unto me. He said, and don't bring anything but your crown. Don't bring, don't, don't garb yourself, don't do anything, just bring your crown. And when we look at that story, a lot of times when we look at it, um, most theologians, they share that Vestai was the beginning of what they call women's rebellion. When women, because Vestai said, no, I'm not coming. But when I began to look and to delve into what the scripture was sharing about Vestai, one of the things that I began to see was that Vestai was from the Persian culture. She was from the culture in Iran, which today's would be modern day Iran. And most of the time we know them that when they walk around, they walk around covered. So her husband was saying to her, come to me, but don't even come covered. And that I knew that that was against her culture and her belief. Now, please don't get it wrong. I'm not justifying her rebellion. But one of the things that the Lord began to show me was that her husband, who was supposed to cover her, and not to bring her into a place where she was be exposed did not do that. And I began to look at what's happening in the world today. We have our, our young men are learning to uncover their women and call them all out of their names and, and treat them with disdain and disrespectful. And that's what the king did back in the Bible days. He was telling this young lady to go against something that she believed in. Young women. Don't let anyone tell you to go against what you believe in. Stand up for what you know is right. A lot of times we have women, he was telling her, don't wear anything, don't cover yourself. And we find ourselves in this day society, women don't want to cover themselves. They, they think if they show a little flesh, that's the way to get a man. And if I show a little this and show a little that, but here Vesta still, she was wrong when she rebelled, but she still stood for what she believed. We've got to have a standard. We have to teach our young women to have a standard. I love it oftentimes I see Byron on Facebook and I read some things that he'll share about his daughter and how he's covering her. How as a man he's showing her how to be treated. And that's what we should do. Young men, we need to cover our women. We need to give them respect. 
I know, Caleb, sometimes Gianna gets on your nerves, but you still need to cover her in school, and you still need to protect her. We still need to protect our sisters. Ahasuerus didn't do that. So he decided to, he would expose his wife and he would bring her out. And in that Persian Gulf, if, if, if that had been me in those days, if I had known what the Bible says, that the husband is the head of your household, I would have been a different vassal because I would have sent a message and said, baby, please, you know, you know it's not right. Baby, I don't want to do this. I don't want to expose myself. I don't, but she didn't do that. The Bible gives no reference to that. She just rebelled. So the bottom line is, women, we don't rebel, okay? We are to honor our husbands. We are to remember that they are the head of the household, that they are the ones that God has put in charge, and we're to follow their leading, and we're to walk where they walk. And we also are to know that when they mess up and we go to God, I often tell my husband all the time, when you get to heaven, for every tear I cry because of you, God's going to hold you responsible. <laughs> There is a place that we're to walk and we're supposed to cover our women. So she didn't say this. So the story goes on that Vashti was dethroned. She was replaced. So that's where we find Esther. Women don't lose your place in the things of God because there is another. The enemy is trying to make you lose your place. And we lose our place because we get caught up in so many things. Don't lose your place. Don't be swayed by the things of the world. Stand up and have a testimony. And as we went on in Esther, we know the story of Esther. And Esther's story goes such as this, that she was raised by her uncle Mordecai. And Esther was raised because her parents, it gives no reference to why her parents were gone and why they were lost or anything like that, but she was orphaned. And Mordecai, the Lord placed a man in her life to raise her to be the woman that she was. And just as Vestai was walked off the scene, um, the, the king, the king Asher Harris said, listen, I need a bride. He was smart enough to know that he, lived, he needed somebody to walk by his side. And, he, and Haman sent his niece. He sent her to be a part of that bride, to be the part of the lineage to try to find a bride. And they say for 12 years, 12 months, she began to prepare herself, and all the women prepared themselves. As much as you prepare yourself, there is one thing that God has for your life, and he has purpose. And you might prepare yourself for your purpose, and you might prepare yourself for your purpose, but God has a purpose and a plan for your life. Don't get lost, don't get served, because as women of God, we have a purpose in the kingdom of God. As men, we have a purpose in the kingdom of God. And we have to understand that my purpose is not your purpose, but I have to do the will of God. Yes, Bishop said I'm dramatic. That's why I'm over the drama ministry. You don't want nobody that can't be dramatic. You need a little drama. In, but blessed be the God, I walk in the purpose that God has designed. And that's what we have to learn. We have to walk in the place where God has ordered our steps. So Esther is an example. But even in the midst of walking where God had called her, she had prepared herself. And that's the beauty of the story that I love, that Esther prepared herself. Sometimes we want things and we want to get some places, and I am guilty of that. I want this, and I should be here, and I should be there. But have you prepared yourself? Have you ordered your steps before the Lord? Have you prepared yourself? In the Bible, it says she perfumed herself. And for me, that would be going before the Lord in worship. Going before the Lord in prayer, reading my Bible, setting up the atmosphere, preparing myself before the Lord. That's what we are called to do as women and as men to prepare ourselves. Men, that doesn't leave you out. You have to prepare yourself as men before the Lord. There's nothing like seeing a sanctified man raising his hand, giving God glory, giving him honor. I don't want to know you by your brute strength. I want to know how much you can pray. I want to know how much you can seek the face of God. I want to know that when danger comes, you're not going to pull out your gun, but you're going to fall on your knees and pray. And that's not a slight to the gun owners, but you got to do what you got to do. But for those of us who walk in the things of God, our first thing should be to pray and to seek the face of God. I want my husband's first word when there's an emergency, the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. So Vestai... I mean, Esther walked into the throne because of the fact that she prepared herself. Out of all the thousands of women that were there, she prepared herself because God had a purpose. There's something about when God has a purpose. 
Now, if you'll notice in the book of Esther, a lot of theologians, they discuss it all the time. Is it really a part of the Bible and is it, should it really be in there? Because nowhere in the book of Esther is the name of God mentioned. But never so clearly can you see God's hand. There is something so unique about how God orders how the scriptures are that in almost every 66 books of the 65 books of the Bible, there's one that never mentions the name of God but still speaks volumes of who God is. We ought to walk like that. That's an example for us. If we don't say Jesus, they ought to know that there's something different. If we don't say praise the Lord, we ought to know that something's different in our life. That's a commandment to you. If you don't have an opportunity to share, they ought to know that there's a God in your life. There ought to be something about you. There's something, and I'm not talking about just the skirts all the way down to your ankles. I'm not talking about, but it's something about your speech. They said to Peter when he tried to cuss and swear, they said, you know, your speech betrays you. And that's how it should be. Some things shouldn't ought to be comfortable in the mouth in the lives of the saints of God. Cuss words shouldn't fly out that quickly in the mouth in the saints of God. Because we're prepared people. And our life should speak values. No, we're not always perfect. And we do make mistakes. But here in the book of Esther, the word of God spoke so valiantly, and they never said the word God. Isn't that just awesome? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we are here now in the story, and it's in the fourth chapter where Esther is brought to the king. And we know the story of how her uncle had raised her and how Haman had sat up there right there at the king's feet. And Haman was a part of the same the same kingdom. It was Esther now. She was the queen. She was brought to the king. He said, I want to make you my queen. That means all the other women that had passed who had not made the grade. I want to make the grade when I stand before the king. Hallelujah. I want him to say I'm worthy when I stand before the king. Hallelujah. But one thing that had happened was as she stood before him and she did her daily duties right there in the house was a snake. Right there in the house was Haman, somebody that was against her. Somebody was out to kill her. Now let me just give you a background and I'm going to move on. Haman was a part of the king's kingdom in Persia over there in Iran. How did the Jews end up over there? Because they had been dispersed because of things that had happened in the Babylonian times. And they had, got, they had became slaves and they were taken out to other places and to other kingdoms. So here they are in the land where they're not a part of but still representing their God. So when Haman walked by the gate, Mordecai knew that the Bible says that God, you shall have no other God before you and you shall not worship another God. So he didn't bow. There's coming a time, and it might be so sooner than we think, where we're going to have to stand up for what we believe. We're going to have to say, okay, take my benefits, do what you can, but I will not bow. I will not heed to the word of the enemy. And Haman decided, he said, I'm not going to, Mordecai said, I'm not going to bow. But Haman got so enraged in his spirit, and it wasn't just because he wouldn't bow. It was because he remembered that Haman was, I mean, Mordecai was a Jew. And Haman had came from the side of the Agites. And way back in the Bible, in the book of um, 1 and 2 Samuel, when Saul was supposed to kill all the Agites, and as I began to read that, I could hear God, when God says, put some things down, he means it. And there's a reason why he wants you to put it down. The Bible says that God had told Saul to kill all the Agites, to kill the Amalekites, to kill them all. And he didn't kill them all. He said, but I thought I would bring a sacrifice and something like that. And he let some of them go and some of them escaped, only to come back well over 400 years later to try to kill and destroy them. That's why God tells you to let go of some things. It's not because he don't want you to have fun. He understands that this is going to be damaged to you. It's going to tear your life up. Don't get mad and say, oh, I don't know what's going on. Why won't I do this and why can't I do that? You can't do it because it's not good for your spirit. The Bible says all things are lawful but not expedient. Everything is not for you as we walk in the things of God. So because Saul did not do what he was supposed to do over five books earlier, here the children of Israel were about to suffer now. How many of us are suffering because of the things that we've done or our parents have done or our grandparents? Don't let the circle repeat itself. Stop it now. Stop it now. But I, let me go on. Amalekite, so he, Haman got mad and he said, listen, 
He said, not only, and this was the, the plot of the whole story. And I always thought that the plot, Evangelist Boone, was just the end where I'm going to see the king. But as I begin to say this morning, the Lord began to see, see um, show me the plot. One of the things he said, he said, take a look. He said, he was mad at Haman. But in the Bible, he says, I'm going to kill you and your whole family. He said, I'm going to wipe out every Jew in this continent, and I'm going to try to go to the continent. That's what the enemy is after. Not only you, but your family, your seed, these youth over here, those youth over there. That's what the goal is. He said, I don't just want you. You think if you do a little sin, that is just about you. But no, it affects the body of Christ. And that's what the enemy's goal is. Oh, this is just a little no harm thing. Bible says that a little leaven, leaven the whole lump. So we have to be careful when we walk in the things of God and what happens. And that's what Haman's thing was. He was going to destroy everything about the Jews, everybody that was called a Jew, and every continent that he could get his hands on. Because in this story, Ahasuerus, and if you look it up, his name is Exertes, in the, um, if you look in modern history now, you can actually find the life of Exertes, which is actually Ahasuerus. And what happens is, is his kingdom was wide and it was vast. And it was, so whatever Haman was setting to do, it was going to spread. Don't think it's just going to be for your household. The enemy is out to destroy everything that you have and, and to destroy your name, destroy your kids, and destroy your foundation. The Bible says that he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. We say, oh, that's, that's not really what it means. It is what it means. We've had many examples of it, but it goes on to say that when Mordecai heard the story, he went to Esther and he said, listen, Esther, he said, I need you to go, in, in bottom line language, I need you to go and talk to the king. You have an opportunity. You're in the right place at the right time. God has appointed it. God has ordained it. Let it not be twisted. I need you to go and talk for me. Some of us are in the place that we are because God has designed it. God has made us in positions to help and to be a part. Please don't think it's all just for yourself. We go home into our cute little houses on Sunday morning, praise God for a good service, shut the door, have me and mine, and that's it, have our dinner. What time have we done with somebody else? What fellowship? Somebody that don't have dinner, somebody that don't have an opportunity. What have you done after a Sunday morning service? For such a time as this, God has called us into the kingdom. You got a good job now, but there's somebody in the body of Christ who don't know where the next meal is going to come from. Pour into the body of Christ. Pour into the ministry so that there can be meat for the storehouse. So that there can be something here. God didn't set you up on your own. You have to sit back and recognize it was nothing but the grace of God. It was God's goodness. It was his mercy. Don't look at your positions and your titles and think you're all that and it's just about you and me and my house. God has ordained it for a reason. Pick up a young boy, man. Pick up a young girl, woman. Show them the way. Show them what they can do in the body of Christ. So Mordecai said to Esther, he said, listen. He said, don't think if you don't help us that you're going to make it. Because he said, there will be a deliverer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't you see God? There'll always be a deliverer. Don't think you got it all together and that you can make it on your own. There is a deliverer. Not by might, not by power, but by his spirit, saith the Lord. There is a deliverer in the house tonight. Today, if you don't think you can make it, let me get to the bottom of the story. Take me to the king. I know y'all were waiting for that. Esther said, listen, I'm smart enough to know that I'm not like Mary in the New Testament who was strong. When they said, you with child, she said, blessed be the name of the Lord. When they said, Deborah, you got an issue, she didn't say, okay, mount up and let's fight. But Esther knew where her personality was. But she knew where her strength lied. And she said, listen, take three days. You fast and I'll fast. If I perish, I'll perish. But I'm going to see the king. Some of you need to see the king this morning. You've lost some ways. You've lost some times. And you had some issues. But take me to the king. 
You got some issues. You got some problems, but take me to the king. You need some healing. You're bound up. You need deliverance, but take me to the king. Esther said, I'm going because she had enough sense to realize I'm not just going for me, but I'm going for you. I'm going for the whole household of Shushan. Everywhere a Jew lives, I'm covering them. I'm going for that child who don't even understand. I'm going for that mother who don't even care. She's laying in her bed and she's going to be dead in the morning. But I'm going to see the king. I got a job to do. I wasn't called just to be cute. I wasn't called just to wear the finest suits. But I was called to do a work in the kingdom of God. Take me to the king. Concerned, but take me to the king. It is him who is the deliverer. It is him who will make the way. <laughs> Esther had enough sense to realize and understand she had to get to the king. I know the king was an ugly king and he was a bad king at times and he had his moments and flighty and all that. But here right now he can be a representative to us as in Christ. We can't move, we can't make a difference until you take me to the king. Trust me, I've tried him. Tried to be all that you wanted to be and think that you could be, but not realizing that you need the king. She said, take me to the king. She said, if I perish, I pay. No, we made the song, take me to the king. But she went on to say, the point is that she went on to say, if I perish, I perish. And she said, but take, listen, I'm going to see the king. And the strangest part, and the Lord began to deal with me because a lot of times we stop after that fourth chapter. And I began to look at that, and they said, so after it was all, we'll take you to the king for what? And the Lord said, right there, we, we sing hallelujah, take me to the king. And we sing the song, it's a beautiful song, but it's what the purpose of, that you were called into the kingdom for such a time as this. I know we have concerns, and I know we have problems and issues, and Ebola's on the rise, and, and men and women of God are saying, what are we going to do? Take me to the king. I need to get to the king, and before I get there, I need to pray, and I need to fast, and that just prepares me to go before him. That just sets the tone and sets the atmosphere. Listen, thinking you can make this thing without prayer and fast is not going to happen. You need to turn down your plate sometimes. I was trying to struggle and fast to give, I was trying to do everything, I'm going to tell you the truth. I had not preached in a while on a Sunday morning, I, I thought about what would Evangelist Boone do, or Pastor Boone, and all the many great men and women of God that I've seen, and I've seen a couple of them would lay out for a week and fast. I said, they must not have no jobs, because <laughs> this is hard. Thank God for a word from the woman in Zion. I called Evangelist Pastor, she said, girl, you sound bad. I said, well, I'm getting ready to preach on Sunday. I said, I need to fast. She said, well, you know there's more than one way to fast. <laughs> Regardless of the circumstances or the thing, there is another way to fast and turn down some things because my desire was that the word of God would be, I would not be a distraction to the word of God. And I can speak clearly what God had shared about what he wanted and his purpose for this morning and for this women's service. But it is nothing to say that you're not supposed to pray and not supposed to fast. We were fasting at young ages. Genesis and Maniah and all you guys, we were fasting. We were like 9 and 10. My mother said there is no dinner until after 6. We were like, why? Daddy didn't get paid this week? You know? We were going on a fast. We were going before God. And that means the whole household. Some of us have to teach our children. We have to go back to the old days. Teach our children how to fast. No, we're turning down our plate. I'm tired of these devils up in here. We're going to turn down our plate. I'm tired of the spirit of rebellion that rose up in that style to rise up in you. We're going to turn our plates down. That's what it's about. So the story goes on, and I'm coming to a close. First close. I'm coming to a close. And <laughs> One of the things that happened was after Esther... Realize what happened. The king held out the scepter to her. Please don't realize, please know that God is not waiting to hold out a scepter to you. His door is always open. He said, come unto me, all you that are laboring and heavy laden. 
He said, and I will give you rest. He said, come unto me so you don't have to wait to think that the scepter has to be laid open to you. God has already opened up the scepter the day he died on the cross. The day the blood of Jesus ran down the throne, that was his opening door, saying, come unto me. I've already made the way, just come. Meet me at the altar, do what you need. You don't even have to wait and have a song. You can meet him and he'll be the deliverer. So Esther went before the king and the scepter was held out to her and he loved her so much he said, what do you want? That's what happened when a woman walks in the place that she's supposed to. God will give you such favor with the man that you're married, married to. God will give you favor and he will order your steps. The Bible says that he was ready to give a half of his kingdom, whatever you want. Never again do you read him of having 180 days of celebration. Nowhere after he married Esther. Sometimes you need just the right woman. So women and men, hold on for the right person that will help you walk in this life, that will help you make a difference. We were talking the other day, yesterday we had a workshop for the flag ministry. And one of the things that we were saying in the workshop was how that there used to be a standard in the, in the Jewish times, you were, if you got lost, and you wanted to know where your family was, there was a flag and it was a standard bearer. And you say, oh, there's my family over there. We need to hold a standard. This man, never again did you hear the King Asher Harris walk in the level of drunkenness as he walked in the first chapter because he had a woman that walked beside him. Women, we are called to walk beside our men. We are called to be that help me to help meet the need. If he can't count, I need to count for him. If he can't write, I need to write for him. If he don't know how to dress, I need to help him dress. I need to be that help me. I'm the help me. I'm not walking beside him, behind him. I'm walking next to him. If he making $2 and it takes $10, I need to get a job. But you run your own household, I'm talking about mine. But, it, but we are called to be a help me. We're called when in the spiritual realm, if he's not operating in that place as the head of the household and he's not praying, there's nothing wrong with you saying, come on, baby, let's pray. There's nothing wrong with you helping to orchestrate it. We are a help me. So never again did, more the, did um, the King Asher Harris walk in the foolishness that he did in the beginning because he had a woman that stood beside him. And I know women, let's be honest, sometimes they don't want to listen. Trust God. Believe God. Fast and pray. Trust God that you, he will allow you to be that help me. But the last point, and I really am closing that I wanted to share that the Lord had gave it to me. One of the things that happened was in the ninth chapter, the story goes on. Remember the fourth chapter, a lot of people stop at. But according to what had happened, Haman was not only after just Mordecai, Mordecai, but he was after everything that went on in Mordecai's household. That was the whole plot of the story. He wanted to destroy anything that looked like God. And so today in your lives, men and women of God, the enemy is after you and your household and everything that comes after you. Everything that's attached to you, the enemy is after it. Your nephews, your nieces, your god brothers, your god sisters. The enemy is out to destroy and he will use any tick, anything to get you to that place. So Esther, after she went before the king the first time, in the book ninth chapter, she had to go before the king again. And a lot of times we don't talk about that story. And the reason why she had to go back was because there was a decree set out by the king. Now Mordecai's life was saved. Esther's life was saved. But what about everybody else in the kingdom? It's bigger than us. Sometimes we might have to work the night shift because even on the day shift, there's some things left over in the night shift. We're all called to work a shift. We're all called to do something in the body of Christ. There should not be somebody in here that gets lost or have need or lack of when we have so much in the body of Christ. So Esther knew as much as that man loved me, I still got to go before him and king and say, look, baby, please, I, I just got one more thing. And what she had to share with him was the fact that my life was spared and so was Mordecai. But give us a decree so that we might fight against every adversarial attack that has been decreed by your first decree. 
There was a reason she had to go back, and there is a reason why we have to stand up in the body of Christ, because there is a decree out against every man and woman of God to once again destroy everything that you have that's not like God. So she went before the king, and the last thing that the Lord had dealt with me to share is that after we have gone to see the king, we have to recognize the power and authority that we have in our hands. It's a, an authority thing. It's a kingdom thing. You've got to realize where you stand in the kingdom of God, men and women. You have to understand that you have power in the blood of Jesus Christ to take down kingdoms, to bring down those things in authority, to make a difference, to set up things, to set up opportunities. We don't just have to be below. We can be above. We are called to be above. We're not called to be beneath. We're living beneath our privileges. We need to walk in kingdom principles. And that's for me what the book of Esther was about. Learning to walk in kingdom principles. Learning to walk as a woman of God, as dramatic as I am, as God has called me to be. Whatever your personality, whoever you are, let God use you. Let him use you to be glorified. It's not about me. It's not about you, but it's about him. It's that the kingdom of God can be delivered. So we can set up people, we can set up thrones, we can undergird the man and woman of God. They've got work to do, and we've got work to do. If there's a need, if there's find yourself this morning, and you have some issues and some concerns, yes, the thing says take me to the king, but after you get to the king, you have a purpose. You weren't just going to the king to be cute and get your own deliverance, but you are called for a time such as this, in Jesus' name. Who bless the Lord Jesus? Can we say amen? Called into the kingdom for such a time as this as the altar workers and the prayer councils come at this moment. that which God has given unto you and given unto us individually and corporately is to be understood. Evangelist Downing was sharing that once Esther got a glimpse of the big picture she moved further. She got a glimpse of the big picture. Sisters and brothers, the big picture is really goes beyond you personally. It's a bigger picture. It's a kingdom principle. A heart had been stirred, I pray today to get an understanding it goes beyond male and female but you've been called for such a time as this we want to pray with you you're here today, this, this morning we want to pray with you we want to pray that your understanding will be opened up that you have the strength that you'll overcome shyness and bashfulness. That you allow God to really be God. That the fear factor won't keep you stuck in that environment but that you'll shake yourself. Be like those leprous men that say, I'm not here. I got to keep on going. Though I have leprosy, I'm not going to. Why sit here, we and die? I find that when you put a concern for others, 
God moves awesomely in your, in your capacity or in your life. You have not yet, you have not yet seen the fact that you must be, you need to be born again of the water and the spirit. You need the new birth experience. It is not an option. We're not optionizing things. You need to be filled with God's spirit. And he'll lead you and he'll guide you and he'll direct you. And you won't go by your own thought processes and your own premonitions in your own imagination but you allow God to be who he says he is thank you Lord Jesus thank you Lord Jesus hallelujah Jesus I'm a 
Available. And I am My storage is empty. My 